Today, we have two very special guests on our program, introducing Lem hey. and Lime. Hello. For Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Thanks for having us. What is Starry Lemon Lime Soda? It's a crisp, clear burst of lemon lime flavor, and it's caffeine-free. Between us, one of you must be a little more important to Starry than the other. Who is it? We're both important. So we could just as easily be Starry Lime Lemon Soda. No, that doesn't sound right. Oh, I like it. So you saying hip-hop could be hop-hip. Works for me. Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Starry hits different. I'm 10 feet ahead of you, kiss me, it's something you'll never do I turn around and I level you, no motivation is needed Look, I put myself on the pedestal, this is incredible Take your fandom to the next level with the official Grizzlies app Go all access and behind the scenes It's got to be heavy defense, that's where it starts for us Personalized to where you are and who you are Get easy access to ticketing, the game day guide And your own app customization right at your fingertips Upgrade your experience and download the Grizzlies app today I will take High School Musical with my fifth and final pick because it is a sports movie. You do got to get your head in the game. I love High School Musical. I love musicals. Sports and musicals can coexist in this beautiful world. What a beautiful, beautiful movie. Even though High School Musical 1 is not even the best of the High School Musicals. Tune in to the Jessica Benson Show with CJ Hurt live every weekday at 8 a.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Let's face it, there's a lot of trash talk in basketball, but the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power on board, a class-exclusive industry-first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator and leaves the competition speechless. Ford F-150, official truck of the Grizzlies. Greatness starts here at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Classes full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds, GBWR. Today, we have two very special guests on our program, introducing Lem hey. and Lime. Hello. For Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Thanks for having us. What is Starry Lemon Lime Soda? It's a crisp, clear burst of lemon lime flavor, and it's caffeine free. Between us, one of you must be a little more important to Starry than the other. Who is it? We're both important. So we could just as easily be Starry Lime Lemon Soda. No, that doesn't sound right. Oh, I like it. So you saying hip hop could be hop hip? Works for me. Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Starry hits different. Grizzlies fans know it's the team that gives you the edge. Big River Steel does too. That's why we're looking for team members to help us reshape the steel industry for a more sustainable tomorrow. Our edge starts with you. At www.bigriversteel.com backslash join to join our dash team. That's www.bigriversteel.com backslash join to join our dash team. Heart Royal Flush Tour 2024, November 14th, FedEx Forum. A journey through the hits and timeless classics. The iconic band returns with special guests. Jason Bonham's Led Zeppelin Evening. Tickets on sale now at heart-music.com. Heart with Jason Bonham's Led Zeppelin Evening. Produced by AEG Presents. It's more fun to be there live to see the Memphis Grizzlies hit the court all season long. From the electricity and FedEx Forum to the highlight reel plays, there's nothing quite like Grizzlies basketball. As the official marketplace of the Memphis Grizzlies, Ticketmaster gets you in with a huge selection of seats. So get off the couch and into the stands while you still can. Score tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. That's Ticketmaster.com. Elevate your hotel experience in the heart of downtown Memphis at the Westin Memphis Beale Street. Our AAA Four Diamond Hotel boasts spacious guest rooms and suites, refreshed meeting space, upscale dining, and more. Just steps away from the sights and sounds of Beale Street, FedEx Forum, and the Memphis Rock and Soul Museum. After a full day of work or play, retreat to your hotel room or suite featuring luxury bedding, a contemporary bathroom, a spacious workstation, complimentary coffee, and a flat screen TV. During downtime, you can take advantage of perks such as our on-site fitness center, 24-hour business center and upscale dining at Penny's Nitty Gritty. On your next visit to downtown Memphis, make the Westin Memphis Beale Street Hotel your home away from home. Live from downtown Memphis, this is the Chris Vernon Show, presented by Caesar Sportsbook on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Now, here's your host, Chris Vernon.
on, go on to the media.com. It's Chris Vernon. Show. Whoa. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. It's a Wednesday, April 17th, 2024 edition of the show. Today on the show, Gary Parrish from the Gary Parrish Show is going to join us in studio, as will Jessica Benson. She'll get us caught up on everything we need to know about the world of entertainment and pop culture that we may have missed. We'll go through all the news and notes of the day. It was an eventful day because we had two play-in games that went on last night. The Warriors run is probably at a complete end. And we'll talk about the Lakers beating the Pelicans. In addition to that, there's two more play-in games going on tonight. We'll get to all the news and notes of the day. It's a Wednesday. It's beautiful outside. Smile. Let's do it. Turn it up! Having a good day. All right, we got a bunch of stuff to get to. There were two basketball games that went on last night. There are two more that are going on tonight uh, that are going to help decide who we are going to see in the playoffs, which are starting this weekend. And there is another big NBA story that has nothing to do with basketball that we have to get to. Before we get to anything, I welcome John Rose to the show. John Rose, aka the Cologne Ranger, the Body Spray Band, is Senior Sack, aka John the Backpole, Johnny Bearcat. The Grim Roser, John Asparagus, Johnny Neck Harp, John Lance, John Pistol, Yogi Roser. Yogi Roser, indeed. Back last night. Oh, you're back with back, the hot yoga. Back last night. Oh. First class in over a month. Wow. Uh, we're a little sore. He's all the way Not back, Not pain, folks. no pain, but we, we're a little sore. Namaste. Little sore, but no pain, yes. Namaste. Namaste. Very good restore Devin class. Walker's here. He's the microphone mangler. Sinur Quasadilla, Mr. Matt. Navajo Joe. The reporter, the photographer. He is. Just know, today, if I ever send y'all John Tate photo photo today, just know. Just know. Bit. You know, I say that a lot. That's my way of confirming now. Never mind. I, I, you yeah. should have workshopped that. That was yeah. bad. Yeah, Gary Parrish is here. He is of the Gary Parrish show. What's happening? So you brought up John Day Porter. That is the big story that is going everywhere. Uh, in fact, on every news outlet, breaking. Look, it's going to be on. Uh, it's one of those that uh, goes beyond sport. No matter what channel you are watching, there'll be the little scroll on the bottom because the words lifetime ban are used. Anytime anybody gets a lifetime ban, that is going to supersede whether or not it is a sports story or a news story. And Jonte Porter, who has been in his Dang. brother's shadow for many, many years, is out. Former Grizzly. In fact, I would argue now... Much more famous than yes. his brother yeah. Michael. I mean, hey, right? listen, listen to that podcast. You never know, bro. Michael Porter Jr. He got a lot of roles on the podcast. You never really know. I know. He's crossing barriers, bro. He is, but it still has not crossed over enough for people to know more about him yeah. than know about. Jonte Porter now is going to etch his name in the history of sport. In a way that we would have never expected. And and thank God he he's played like, for the Raptors so it doesn't say former Grizzlies. Exactly. John Tay Porter. Yes. He's, like, yes. he's like this uh, this generation's Pete Rose. Yeah. He really minus, is. Minus all the hits. <laughs> and, <laughs> and accolades. And accolades. And, uh, both like, on teams that wear red. It's like if Pete Rose were tall but sucked. <laughs> <laughs> That's what John Tay Porter is. Well, look, man. The story that has come out about Jonte Porter has led all kinds of people to making jokes because he didn't win. <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah, like, hey, you got to at least win the bets, bro. At no, least he one won twenty-one thousand dollars. <laughs> I he, mean, net winnings twenty-one thousand dollars. It's certainly not worth throwing away a career. <laughs> no, but you would, you would like great. to win twenty-one thousand. I would, but again, I'm not. I mean, no, look. it's stupid. It's like the dumbest. It's like really the dumbest. Well, look, the dumbest, obviously, look, him betting for the Raptors to lose, <laughs> struggling. That's what's going to get him the in, most. In fairness, I've done that myself. But the funniest, by <laughs> far, by far, 
is that somebody that he was associated with put an eighty thousand dollar bet that included Jonte Porter props, which is that's nasty work. No, I mean the idea that that is not getting flagged. There is no way someone would put a crazy <laughs> amount of money on Jonte Porter no, that's props right. that's unless they knew to take a Jonte and, Porter. And according prop. to the reporting, that got flagged immediately. <laughs> of course, it did. <laughs> it'd be like if I like what is it? It's tax week, right? It'd be like if I sent in my taxes and it was like, and I made a forty million dollar donation to St. Jude. They'd be like, "All right, we got to flag that." Yeah, right. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> Did you, I mean, what does this dude do? Right, this doesn't make sense. That's what, that's what, it, 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 like they really will flag that immediately, and then it leads because then, it's ridiculous. Because it's ridiculous. Of course, it's ridiculous. How they could engage in something that ridiculous is beyond me. Right, and I know that. At one point, they said all bets lost. Uh, all three bets were lost. So, like they want to, they want to make that clear that the bets were lost. And I wondered at that point, right, of the stuff that you don't find, right? Like this is obviously Porter and his associates, which is what they would have access to, right? Not whoever the associate then tells and tells right. it because. Look, at one point, it was they, they they had said that DraftKings, like one of the ways this got flagged, was they had said the most bet prop of the night, yeah. the night before, was Jonte Porter, like under 0.5 three pointers <laughs> made or there something. Were like, multiple, what? There were multiple <laughs> NBA days this season where the most action won were on Jonte Porter props. Right. Which is a huge problem. Unders, right? Because right. <laughs> like, you know what that means? That means he's got to check into the game and then get out the game. Right. And he left games multiple times with, like, hey, I don't feel so well. Yeah. Oh my, eye hurts. I yes. told you, bro. The, the day that stuff happened initially, we were in Denver. I texted you. I was like, bro, Michael Porter's outside the locker room and he is pissed. How can these guys? He was like pacing back and forth, like mad, bro. How can they be so dumb? Seriously. Well, they don't make uh. you take an IQ tested be able to be tall and play in the NBA. You know? I get it. Yeah. I guess I should have known after Reggie Miller's diatribe last night about how, look, the conversations that, that players my, have on the bus. Oh, yeah. He said that. He said that. He said these are the conversations that are had on the bus. Oh, yes. I thought you were talking about the other thing. No. What, the, the, that Zion was 6'3"? No. That, well, yeah, I caught that, No, they're going up four. <laughs> yes. I was like, what is he talking he about? He said those oh, are yeah. the conversations that are had on he was the like, bus. No, no, and I'm like, is it just a bus of dumbasses? Yeah, like, he was like, he was why are you throwing everybody else in this? Did he you was, see this? No. Oh, they were very uh, into Lakers, Pelicans. They're up three. No, they're up two. They're up two with two free throws. Correct. Okay, and it's like, so he makes the first. Now up three, there's like three. No, they, before he takes the first, yeah. he says the conversations we have <laughs> are, do you make the first and then miss the second intentionally? Right. And so then they make the first, and he's like, now now you, what you got to decide is do you want to put the game away by making the free throw? Which, by the way, if you ever say that making the free throw can put the game away, that's what you want to do. What right. we're talking about. He said, or do you want to miss it so that they can't advance it? Bro, you just said if you make the free throw, the game's <laughs> over. So let's do that. Right. What are you talking? It was like he was arguing with himself and in the most stupid way. And he yeah, also said that these are the conversations that players have. <laughs> yeah. And who, I'm like, who are you on? Hold on. You and, you maybe and Dante? This, <laughs> maybe maybe, J maybe J.R. Smith? Yeah. J. Maybe J. now I'm clear. Because I, I I'm watching this, and I'm just, I'm, I'm watching it the way I'm always watching basketball, which is I'm doing three other things. Yes. And um, I'm hearing it, and I'm like, did he just? So I immediately go to Twitter, like doing searches, like Reggie Miller, and outrageous. I'm like, did he really? Yeah, he was tweaking even the Even me broadcast. half listening was like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard somebody say. Yeah. He was, Truly. And he like that's his job. How could he? Not, and then you know what? You know what? I saw so much Reggie Miller stuff, and then I like. Uh, I guess I had searched yeah. it as well. And so, you know, like everything that you do is tracked. And so for whatever reason on my like page on Instagram this morning, Reggie Miller's Instagram came up and it was him doing dirty dancing moves with his kids after they had, it's, I swear to God, you could go look on his Instagram. It says me and the kids just watched one of my favorite movies of all time. Dirty dancing. I know I'm a bad parent. And then they were like doing the, I had the time of my, and I'm like, what the hell is going on? He does have, doesn't he have that damn tattoo on his belly button? Yes. Okay, of that, the sun. That checks all the boxes. Did right you see there. one of his neighbors at one time? Google this one. One of his neighbors. I'm like got and jumped on social media and was like I, I can't remember his social media but one of the neighbors went public with it it'd be like 
hey, Reggie Miller, like, I really would appreciate it if you would stop texting my wife. <laughs> oh, oh my God. God. The headline is Reggie Miller goes after another man's girl, yeah. gets a restraining order for his trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, uh, yeah. But I'll tell you this. Yo, that whole diatribe he went on, whether they should make the free throws Come or on, not. Man. I mean, and then he did say, you know, for everybody out there, these are the conversations. So not only he threw the entire NBA under <laughs> yeah. the bus, too. All, all like, these are the conversations the- yeah. you yeah. dumbasses are having no, on the no bus. No wonder we have to have analytics departments. Because you idiots think you should miss the free throw. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where you got that shit. They think, they they got think it's four, okay to you bet 80 these, grand on a Jante Porter. You got all these former players. Players on their podcast talking about. I just don't think if you've never played, you should be able to talk about it. I'm like, well, Reggie Miller played, and he thinks you should miss the free throw. He's in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, he's, he's an idiot. He is an idiot. Like, I feel bad for Kevin Harlan, yeah. bro. He just be saying shit, bro. He was with Zion draw through. Who's like, you know, Zion's a truck when he's six three. I'm like, I was like six three. Six, like three? Zion might not be as tall as you think, but he ain't six three. Yeah. Dude, and I'm gonna tell you something about that game last night. Watching that beyond the Reggie Miller thing, that was. About as let down as you could ever be from watching a basketball game because he was an absolute force of nature. He's unstopped. There's yes. nothing they could do with him, and then it just ended. <laughs> he just, he just left. Court. He just went to the and locker room, and, and you they, couldn't even see it. I Allie still don't know LaFour, what happened. Allie LaForce, your homegirl, yeah. is back in the tunnel, <laughs> and she's like, and David Griffin just went back there. And like they, It took... What a half an hour yes. after the game was over for us to find out, get a report yeah. that he had leg soreness. We're Bro, like, what Gr- is going Gris on? Pio, Gris Pio would have had that immediately. What is going on? Uh, you can't, well, they can get that oh, together, well, bro. that's because they're pros at injury. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about that. We might as well have surgeons. <laughs> on Ro- 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 Ross has. We'd, we'd have had the surgery done Jesus by the end of the Christ. game. Yeah, Ross has. Shut he, up. By Gris, the end of the season, has, has, yeah. season, our PR staff was administering MRIs. Gris PR has saved in the drafts. We'll be reevaluated in two weeks. And then just adds the name at the beginning of it and sends it out. That's tough. Shout out to Undertaker, man. Um, so yeah, it's like, and it, like the reporting now is it's a hamstring, which is not good. No, hamstrings, groins, calves. But it right. didn't make sense because he did this. He walked off and did this. No, whatever. he did the. He did. Yeah, the, but if you see him, he like went to. He was like doing that. I was like, whatever it yeah. was, it was something you can't see, but he knew immediately. He knew. Right. He knew. But and, he was a dog, bro. Last oh, night, dude, man. he that was That's everything you've wanted. It was him everything to be. you've ever wanted him to be, right? It was he, at one point. Tony Allen, I was te- I texted him and I said, "Dude, Zion's doing exactly what you said he was gonna do." And he said, <laughs> "You know what his response was?" He said, "They're guarding his ass like he's Tony Allen." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Yeah, but he's th- this is the thing. Full head of steam, and, bro. And this is what Ja did. This is what Giannis did. This is what Westbrook did. This is what all these guys do." Right, which is okay. Now you are allowing me to uh, you you are saying go ahead shoot it instead of shooting it. I am going to use this space as a runway. Right, and now you you can't get in front of no him. Chance. LeBron tried twice. It. I and mean, LeBron is a monster. He not going off got his feet. Trucked. Right. Truck. Yeah, he, he was man, dude. He is so explosive in those like two steps it takes to get well, to the rim. Still, that's the way it was in high uh, school, and then people didn't think he'd be able to do it in college. Buddy. Then he did it in college, and I think once he did it at Duke, people were like, "Okay, he'll do it in the NBA." But whenever he's healthy and in shape, that's what he looks like. Bro, Dude, he is a. Force, and, they, and the other man. thing is this: it was like Zion and four dudes is what ended up being the thing that like. Drug them all the way back. Now, Trey Murphy was good, but like they had Nance and they had Alvarado. Right and they, because McCollum was horrible and Ingram was horrible. Yeah, he had milk carton. And people were like, why didn't he put Ingram back in? Because he sucked. Right. Yeah, he carton. couldn't do anything. And he CJ was, looked like he forgot how to play basketball. Terrible. Like, if he didn't play us, he didn't know what to do. It was the weirdest thing. If he doesn't play the Grizzlies, he doesn't know what to do in the But it time. was like this. It turned into, you know how you see it sometimes with uh, – you see it sometimes with Luca. You see it sometimes with uh, some of the other guys in the league, where it's like this heliocentric offense. It's like just you've got the one guy, and he's going to be responsible for the lion's shares of possessions, and then the other guys are going to play off of him. Like that's what you can do, but you can only do that with a like super duper star. Yeah. And it was like that is the best ever that he's looked. I mean, that was that draft night. 
where we got Ja and they got Zion, we thought we were going to look up and at this point that these guys were going to be dominating the NBA playoffs. And obviously it has not gone that way, right, for different reasons. Zion's have been health-related. Ja did uh, health-related and obviously had his own issues. But I, I, it's still – there's still the, – the moment last night where I was watching, I'm like, man, they're still so young in their careers. You think about yeah. guys not winning until they're 26, 27, 28, and it's like if – one, one buddy texted me last night and said this might have been the best thing that could happen because Zion, you know, boosted his value to the, 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 uh, the level that it should be. And if they just want to move on, then they can just move on, you know, from here. And I'm thinking to myself, like, move on. They are not I'm like, on. this guy, this guy looked last night like he could be the best player uh, one of the top five to ten players in the league. If you told me what we one, always thought. If you told me at some point over the next three years that there would be a Western Conference final starring Zion Williamson and John Morant, that's yes. not crazy. No. Like, it's it, still it, young they'll, they'll in their career. Take, they'll both take weird paths to get there, but I can still see them getting there. Because we've seen it. What you saw Zion last night is the type of guy who can carry a team to that. And what we saw, even in those games where Ja was back this year, you saw it. Well, and also this other thing. That's not the team to do that to. Yeah. No. You, no the, like, do they the got vets stuff? and they got, they got big dudes. Guys, yeah. They got big dudes. They got big, I mean, he was going right through them. Size. He, and I'm surprised he only shot nine free throws. Well, he that, was going that one play we just showed, he like he like lined up with LeBron and then AD got switched on. He just went right into it. Blow pass. Yeah. yeah either tomato chest him or just blow pass. Yeah. yeah. It, it was, I don't know, bro. I just feel like it was some funny business and him just like walking off the court like that. It was just weird. Like soreness, leg soreness. It's a hamstring. He just pulled his hamstring. Hey, bro, yeah. stress that out, bro. You got two minutes, bro. He will not be you back. You can't do that. No, yeah, dude. He it's won't a be back. You... Two minutes. He no, he's done. He's done. He's done. Damn, Zion. Yeah. Man. They'll lose. The thing up. is, is take care of your body. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like the thing. How do you? At get... some point, he will. Yeah, and it felt like this year was the year. You know, from the time they kept saying last night, from the time they played that in season tournament to last night, he had lost 25 pounds. That's right. Yeah. Right. So it felt like you're on the way to him really taking care of himself. And Dave, but you say but just play, just play. Like the last time we saw someone do that, everybody was pressuring Kevin Durant to play in the finals. And he did, and he popped his Achilles. Right. Mm, well, this is, the hamstring isn't one where, like, you'll pop your Achilles because of it. Yeah. But it's like, you can't move. Right. Just, you can't. You, like, it's it's so easy. He knew immediately. Talk, yeah, he, he was, was he cussing. Was, he, 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 he was hot. Here's what he happens. A bunch of people who've never played basketball today watch that, and they go, just go, play. And every basketball player who's ever had one says, bro, we can't play. In fairness, even Barkley and the yeah. other guys, when they came on last night, they're like, leg soreness? Yeah. Now yeah, because I saw the leg but soreness, but I was they like, did him eh. dirty. Yeah, you should By say, not saying say he hamstring. tweaked his hamstring. Yeah, yeah. Say, give they him the did full, him dirty yeah. last night. I'm like, why would you not just say what the guy did? Because yeah, right. Willie Green couldn't even say what part of his leg. Right. Yeah. right. You should say it's a hamstring, and you guys know what hamstrings are. Like, it's yeah. A, yeah. Like, guys don't play with him. I remember talking to Avery. Because was it Mike Conley? Did Mike Conley have a hamstring one year in the playoffs or something? Tony did. Tony did. Okay. Yeah. It was somebody. But I remember talking to – because I worked with Avery Johnson. I remember t – and I was like, have you ever had one of those? What does it feel? Because I don't know what that feels like. He said, it's out for two months. You can't. He's like, I was out for two months. Yeah, can't Tony was in here yesterday, and he's like, Giannis is not coming back. No. If his calf is like – He's like, I did that. Because right. he did it on the last game of the season, the year that we played yeah, San Spurs. Antonio in the playoffs. Um, he did it on the last day of the season. And it was like, you know, then the, you know, everybody's positive. Like, hey, you know, you do treatment, whatever. He's like, bro, you're not coming back. He's like, it feels like it's just like pulling, like it's about to snap. Right. And you can't run on it. And he's like, and you go and you do hot and cold and you do this you know all this all the treatments you do and then you wake up the next day and it just still hurts yeah. I get, and this is the thing y'all has been out for a week and a half we got a week until the you know they're really into their series uh -huh. and Woj is already saying they're doubtful that he's going to be able to start the series it's like if it wasn't anything if it was just light you you'd get positive news. Right. Yeah. The fact that they're already preparing you and you see the Jonte Porter lines on FanDuel are <laughs> that it's like even odds. In no world would they be even odds with the Bucks. No. The right. <laughs> Pacers, come on. Yeah. No, it's like and if you're Giannis, you're like, okay, if I come back, what am I coming back to? We're not any good anyway. Yeah. 
And then it's like I could blow the whole thing like Kevin did. I and know. then you miss all next season. The Pelicans thing was weird, too, last night because their, their, their crowd was just taken out of it completely by the Lakers. Yeah. And then they made that run. And I felt like it got lit in the fourth quarter. It did. It and then right, right when they were about to turn the corner, he went out and the game was over. Right. It was like an anticlimactic finish. It though. really like, was. Once, once Zion walked I, off, you knew it was over. With. I no. thought they were going to flip the game, didn't you guys? Yeah. When Zion I just thought they had no answer for so, it. Yeah, when it went 95 up and Zion hit the, hit the shot, the yes. timeout, Three commercial. minutes left. I'm like, yo, it's a wrap, bro. Zion cooking. They can't guard him. And the Lakers and are taking all these bad shots. Yeah. And like Willie Green had finally settled on a lineup. That was like a bunch of these role guys that were all defending Dyson Daniels and Larry Nance and yeah. Trey Murphy. Like he was, Ellis. he was not like it was. And they cr- got, they got, they get, when the Pelicans then had it tied like shortly after. I think it was like one fifty-seven left. They had tied, they got it tied again, and LeBron comes down and they strip LeBron and they take off down the other. And I'm like, holy crap, they they might be able to do this. And then Alvarado just threw the ball to Austin Reeves oh, and the yeah. Lakers came down and scored. Well, it's like, there they did. Or maybe Russell got the three in the corner. Russell got like, the three in yeah, the corner right. and started yelling at them. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah and it was like, shit, there, bro, by the way. there it is. Punchable face, by the way. Yeah, but I mean, they, I thought they were going to flip it. I thought they had it. I really did. I think they could. Yeah. I, did you? I mean, they would have got, I mean, especially though, after losing Zion. Do you, you want to talk d- about a mercy killing against <laughs> the Nuggets? At least the Lakers Nuggets should be fun. Does it make you feel like you think the Lakers can make be competitive, more competitive than last year? I mean, it was very competitive, but they it lost was four competitive, but they lost, yeah. and, they, and they didn't beat them this year either. Yeah, they'll win a game or two. Yeah, it's one of those where you need – They'll win a game or two. You need an ankle from so – you got to get – one of those advantageous injuries on the other side. Murray's Murray's gotten hurt a couple times this year, yes, and he's just look, coming off an injury. Well, also, look at a crazy they're, but, 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 like, they're basically running it back, the Lakers, for all intents and purposes. And I'm not sure that the 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 Denver is as good as they were last year, as prepared for the playoffs. I mean, Jeff Green did help them, and Bruce Brown helped. majorly helped them. And so, like they, you know, every time you win, you end up having to lose some stuff. They right. still got their main pieces, yeah, right? It's they got like KCP, Braun, and they Watson. Won better in year two is Peyton Watson. This is going to be his first time really playing in the playoffs. Does He's it concern you at all that Jonte has the Lakers on a money line? <laughs> yes, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be worried. That concerns tough. me. I'll a be great worried. Deal. If that would Lakers. be tough. And I'm hey, look, as a Braun stand, bro. I think Braun got Braun got enough to get them one. I think. Then we'll have a crazy. I wouldn't Braun be surprised game. if they got. We'll get a crazy Braun game. game. Now, then, if the Pelicans do not have Zion. Oh, it's curtains. Then it'll be the Kings. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I'd, I'd rather be Kings with no Zion. Because I don't want to watch the Pelicans with no Zion. Because Bi and CJ are jokes. So yeah. then what? Kings and Thunder. Yeah, yeah. And put it on not, Tubi. Put it on Tubi. GP. I mean, w- which would you rather see? Would you rather see Pelic- Pelicans? Either way, Pelicans like- against. The Thunder? Yeah. Either way, it's on Tubi. Yeah, either way, it's Tubi TV. It's a nasty series. <laughs> either way. <laughs> Cleveland and Orlando at noon tomorrow. Or on Saturday. It's like the Big Ten football game. Dude, it <laughs> really is. It's at the noon. J.P. Morgan game. Yeah. Can you imagine just going to a playoff game at noon that on is, Saturday? That is, that is Iowa, Minnesota. Yes. <laughs> that is Iowa, Yo, Minnesota Get football. them out the way, bro. Well, and then the late game, like, that – I, the Warriors were what they showed us to be all season rather than what they were down the stretch, right? Where they put the pedal to the metal and other teams, right? Like you saw it. I mean, you saw it with individual yeah. players and you also saw it with teams. They always say that early in the season, it's weird. Like all these data analytics guys have gone back and looked and said, oddly, how you performed at the beginning of the season is many times more representative of how you perform in the playoffs than late in the season for whatever reason, right? right? Um, Maybe that's because of injuries take place. Maybe that's because, you know, there's a lot of guys that are just looking at the finish line for the last part of the season. So those games can sometimes become really strange and you don't know what level of team you're playing against. There's, there's going to be a whole group of teams that are tanking. There's going to be a whole group of teams that are trying to see new guys, whatever the case may be. Um, when we saw the Warriors this year, I remember we came in the next day and was like, man, they are not. And they have honestly, I saw uh, Bill Simmons tweeted out last night, just maybe the weirdest six-year run in the history of basketball. They lost the NBA Finals. Then they went 15 and 50. Then they, uh, the COVID year. Then they lost uh, two play-in games. So they lost, and then we played them. Yeah. And they lost mm-hmm. on their home court. 
to miss the playoffs and by virtue of, of that win, the Grizzlies got to play against the Jazz. Then they won the NBA Finals. Then they lost last year in the second round. And then they lost the play in. That's a six year run. They've missed yeah. three they've missed the playoffs for the past five years and won a title in that same stretch. That's crazy, yo. I mean That's crazy to think about. But the year they won the title, like they won it. Congratulations. But like Jamal Murray didn't play that year. Kawhi didn't play that year. John Morant got hurt in the series, and Dylan Brooks shot us out of Game Five. Right, that did. There was happen. a lot of like it broke Those right for did them. Happen. They did. They had, they, no, they, it did that, happen. That did John happen. Morant got hurt because he was and cooked. He was we cooked. Still, there. The code. we still were going to get a Game Seven at home. Yeah. yeah. If oh. Dylan didn't shoot it seven hundred thousand times. Yeah. <laughs> Who did they beat in the West Finals? Uh, huh? Who did they beat in the West Finals? Because Dallas. Dallas. That was the Brunson and uh, Luka, what's it called? Year? And Luca year, yeah. yeah, yeah. Let me see. Let me find. It was 20, 2021? Yeah, it'd be Dallas. Bro, before Ja got hurt, 34, 47, 34. Yeah, they were doing the let Ja go one on one thing. Don't let anybody else kill us. And then when Ja went out, they were like, okay, uh, guard everybody else and let Dylan Brooks shoot them out of the game. 34, 47, 34 in three games. Then he got hurt. Yep. Damn, man, what could have been? But, yeah, Warriors, they, they didn't, that championship was whatever. But they got it, though. They did get it. Because Draymond won it without KD. So, yeah, they got it. But they still ain't. Like, they ain't been right since. They ain't been right. But ha-ha, joke's on y'all. I'm sorry. I, I love seeing them get their ass kicked last night. You do? I love that. That was by 24. It made me yeah. feel so good. Yeah, it wasn't even competitive. It no. made me, ooh. I mean, it all, and then the, well, the ending, Clay. Everybody walks <laughs> back and Clay looks at the court. With the back. Man, get your bum ass in the locker room, man. I got to it tell you. It all has to end sometime, man. I, I got to tell you, you know what, though? It's a hell of I, a run. I will say, the, the Pelicans crowd was weak yes. last night, for sure. That Kings crowd oh, is dude. amazing. I tell you, I, I tell you, it my, really is my favorite bad. crowd, dude, bro. Dude, right off the first shot they made, Keegan. I love that. Keegan. Oh. Oh. They, they got cool stuff that yeah, goes on. Are. Every time you watch a game at their place when it's lit, like, they got... That's my favorite. That's my favorite. Crack, crack. Crack. Yeah, that, I didn't look at this man. Song. Look at this bum ass. Look, he just wants to take one more look, look at it. Take one more look at it, just bum ass. It take your in. ass to the locker room, He's just bro. just trying to soak it all in. Take your bum ass to the locker Devin, room. Maybe one day you'll need to soak in something. I ain't soaking in that? nothing. I ain't from Utah. You what might is want to that? soak in something. What is he doing? He's just soaking, he just soaking, soaking it all in. He knows mate. it's the end. Take your. This is the last time I ever walked off the Golden Warriors jersey. I just want to soak it all in. That's the last. I would bet. That's the last time those three are on the court with the same jersey on. Get your ass. He can come back and take a little contract, won't he? Nah. I think, you know what? Orlando. He'd be perfect. Orlando, I think he's going to be Orlando, bro. Because he doesn't have to play make. Don't have to play make. He literally Catch just has to stand out there and hit threes. Catch and shoot. He'll it's work. worked for Joe Ingles. Hell, they play him. <laughs> they play Gary Harris. Like, you get open threes with Paolo and Franz. Yep. He would be perfect for Catch them. Catch and he'll shoot in Orlando. Even if he leaves. Yeah. You think so? Yes. Not to Orlando. No, he'll he'll just regret it. He'll just there'll be an interview with him in ten years when they're retiring his jersey, and he'll say, "I wish I would have never left." That's what nah. he said. Yeah, what if the Warriors still suck though? Not if not if he gets sixty million. To and do then it. the other question <laughs> is: if he gets 60, if he gets a if he gets a three year sixty million dollar contract, he won't regret so it. So Curry was asked about last night. And Curry just said, "I just want to win." Yeah, it's over, bro. So that's the, are they going to move? Over. Are they it's moving over. Draymond too? Well, they can't bring him back on that kind of contract. No, he would have to take less money. They have the highest payroll in the league. Yeah, you. Well, can. they're paying. A, they're paying the tax. It's like a freaking half a billion dollar right. team. There's like yeah. the first apron, the second apron. They're in like the tenth apron. <laughs> yeah, with dude. how much they Bro. pay. You yeah. have no chance of being able to bring him back at a reasonable yeah. cost. And you're not going to do that. You're not going to pay all that money to have a team that loses in the play. Like, you that's not. No, you have to tell him, we don't want you to leave. You don't want to leave, but we and, and you want to win, and we want to win. We cannot win bringing you back on a big contract. So we have, like, if you want to stay, this is what we have to do. No, he, I think he would want a new lease on life. He could take his, he can take his, you know, voice to a different locker room, and he could try to go prove himself somewhere else and prove that it's not over, right? I, mean, I think he probably knows as they function, it's not going to work there. The only thing he, he will right? prove in Orlando is that he can catch and shoot. It'll be like that's right what now. He, that's what he does now. But that's where you end up. That, that's how you end up, though. Yeah. Right? These guys, like, yeah, you'd be Ray Allen. You'd be Glenn Rice. You'd be yeah. Mitch Richmond. You'd it's be okay, like Clay. these guys that go play with the Lakers. At the end of his career, 
This is what he does. He goes and just knocks down shots. I, I mean, feel, you, I you don't do. Feel bad for Clay Thompson, like bro. you get, look. So, like I'm a LeBron hater, but like, bro, you get open shots. Like, those dudes are still open. No, for don't the say, Lakers. Don't, don't, no, I don't want him to meet the Lakers. Send him to Orlando. Bro, he's a bum. Like Clay he's Thompson's a bum either way. I don't good. feel bad for him at all, bro. All he this can, like he make open threes. Everybody's he like, oh my god, Clay Thompson's so sad. Oh, he's my bro. I don't care nothing. I don't. I don't feel bad for you. He is a guy that needs people to make plays for him. Yes, he can't create his own shot. Nobody. Yeah, there's nobody. He's not creating his own stuff anymore. No, and. Who do they have that create shots for others on that team? Draymond Green, Steph and, like, Steph and Dre. Right, that's it. that's it. And if you just face guard Clay Thompson, where's what's he gonna? And they've got something with some 10. with a couple of their young guys. Jackson Davis was terrible last night, but like, and he just got kind of overwhelmed, and they yeah. just sat him down. But like, th- he showed some promise, and the Pod Podzimski kid, like, he showed. Oh, little Divincenzo. Yeah, so I mean, like they've they got a couple Chinzo. young guys that they can. Work if you're with. trying, to, if you're trying to maximize the last couple of years of Steph Curry, you can't pay him. You just no, I didn't, and I, they know. I don't think there's a conversation about do we give Clay twenty million a year? For, you know, three sixty five one hundred. We don't give him the Draymond contract. That's like a non-starter. I'm saying we'll take you back, but you got to. It's got to be on a team-friendly deal. And if if you're if your motivation here is to make the most money you can make per season going forward. We ain't the place for you anymore. Right. He's got to know that. Yeah. yeah. Clay, you see Chris Paul, bro. They said that Chris Paul finally beat the Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. That's tough for him, bro, because he went over there thinking, like, maybe we could finally make that push. Yes. And he just, yeah. he's at the crib. Right and he next got to hurt. Uh, he I, got, I, it was a wrap for him. I will say, I wish they were still in it. Yeah, for TV I, I'd purposes. I'd rather oh, watch it for TV. Yeah, it's, yeah. Way, it's way better, right? Yes. Somebody said not somebody. having Curry. Well, like last night, I I mean, I fell asleep during the game. Yep. But like I was what like my night was built around. All right, let's lay in bed and watch this. Yeah. Um, tonight, Bulls Hawks. I don't care. Nasty. <laughs> like, like, Nasty. No, I'm not watching that. Nasty. I was listening to something the other day. It said Demar Derozan has played more minutes in the NBA this season than any player. Really? I was like, what Shut the hell? Up to He's like 34. Oh. And he doesn't under, play for the Knicks. Doesn't under Tim play? Yeah. <laughs> right. I thought it was going to be Dante DiVincenzo. Jalen Brunson. Did you see Dante DiVincenzo the last game of the season? He played him 53 minutes. Oh, crap. What is wrong with him, bro? 53! Tibbs? Tibbs, yes. Yeah, he runs him into the ground. Yo, that is 48 <laughs> minutes and a five minute <laughs> overtime. But do you, do you know the people <laughs> with the Knicks like love him? Like everybody. Oh, yeah. Like, Knicks, they're like. Like Wally Zerbiak said, you know, he worked for the Knicks. Yeah, he was like, if they would make Tibbs the coach for life, I would do that. Yes, the like, players, just, players he, who love him. He he just and gets, he wins. He wins. Yeah. He's just good. They love him. Jeff T talked about like he's like, yo, Tibbs is probably one of the best coaches ever played for. Yeah, but it's like wh- Tony loved him. Yeah. Tony the, Tibbs is the defensive coordinator for those Celtics teams. Because like under Doc, players do want to play. Yes, they do yeah. want to play. Contrary to proper belief. Contrary to what we think, they want to play. If you want to play, that's the place to go, yeah, bro. Yeah. You want to get, you want to play forty eight minutes to go to New York. <laughs> Clay yeah. took Clay to sign with the Knicks, right? Nah. Do you th- well, do you, like the Warriors stuff? Do you think like, of course Steph would be there next year, but like hopefully for their sake, they don't add a lot of pieces. But what can they do to like to build around Steph? Because the, the, the dudes they have now are not. It's not Moody ain't there, it. There's not an obvious path to greatness again. Yeah, so it's like Moody ain't it. Uh, well, they tried to, they tried to. It, you got to decide: Are we going to try to? Are we going to try to win right now, like championship style? Yeah. And then you package that stuff and you try to get you another star, right? Because that's know what Steph, you do. You know, Steph want to win. Steph ain't with the. Of course. You just decide. The, you just decide. They tried we're willing. to go, like people, like I don't want to say people forgot, but like they try to go get LeBron at the trade deadline. Right. Right. Like they're, they're, that's the goal. What they're trying yeah. to do is add another big piece. That's yeah. right. Hey, and know? do you sit there and you go, we'll give up Kaminga and we'll give up this guy and, and we'll give up this and, guy. And go, guess who's miserable in Milwaukee. And then, right. Can you go get Dane? Yeah. Yeah. Or He's from there. Yeah. yeah. Or if there's like a, if there's a wing out there, do you sit there and you say, okay, we'll give you Pudzinski and we'll give you Moody and we'll give you this guy and we'll give you this guy and we'll give you a contract, whatever. And now you go into it with Steph and Draymond and some awesome wing right. yeah. that's out there. And you flip Wiggins' contract for something. I mean, you can. Again, if you've got Steph Curry and Draymond Green, you can build three guys yeah. that can fit around that. Did y'all, say, okay. did y'all say mention Donovan? What, Donovan Mitchell? Mitchell? That would I mean, be, he yeah. wants out. Everybody says he wants to go to New York. For them, but, bro. like, they, don't, he's they do have leave, assets. Yeah. Like, right. you just, you they just, do have assets. Like, I do like some of their like, – I would take Moody in a second. There will be a, oh, there will be a disgruntled Moody. superstar in the next two months. Yeah. Don't and, worry about it. Go get that guy. And, and they may be in Phoenix. Who, chubs like KD? I'm saying if they – Spin the block. I don't think KD want to go through that again. 
Probably not. He don't want to go through that again. I think no, but, that, but, but look, they now, they fall into the class of, and we'll see who falls into it uh, as of tonight, you know, because you look and you sit there and you go, all right, the Bulls or the Hawks. One of those is going to lose tonight, and they're going to have a fire sale. With DeMar DeRozan or Trey Young becomes available. Someday. Right. right. Exactly. Like, and maybe, maybe not a full fire sale, but probably close, yeah. right, to where they're going, okay, what are we doing here? We're not running it back with yeah. this group, right? So now all of a sudden, DeRozan is available. And now all of a sudden, well, he's going to be available anyway. He's a free agent, yeah. right? So DeRozan is available, and Levine is available, and Vucevic is available. And, and they look, and they go, all right, we're going to go, and we're going to build out with uh, Kobe White and with Patrick Williams and some of our young guys, Jeez. right? Oh, and, and on the other side, Atlanta – Bogey becomes available, maybe, or or Dejounte, or Trey, yeah. or DeAndre, DeAndre Hunter, Hunter, or yeah. you know Capella's going to be gone, or uh, the big guy, the uh, what's his name, starts with an O. What's his name? The the, 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 the big, big center. Uh, uh, I was, dang, I can't remember his name. Hold on, I got the roster right here. What's his name? The big center. It starts. It starts. Anya with an o. A Kongu. From Kongu. That's right. Uh, on Yeka. On Yeka. On Yeka. That's right. Yeah. On Yeka. And you start. Yeah. To, and you start to look at their team. So I mean. Whoever disappoints it. So, like, the Warriors are the first one that disappointed. And so I would think you take their young guys and try to flip it for something that can win now. Yeah. Right? And I would take – and Clay probably ends up in Orlando. The other team that's come up with Clay is Dallas. Yeah. Oh, Again, please don't let Luka playing get next to Luka, he would just get – and Kyrie. All he has to do is shoot open threes. He would play a pop Kyrie, shot, bro. Like, like, right. Dude, yeah, you're going like to be wide open. shot, bro. All he would, all, that's all you get there. Tim Hardaway like was in the sixth man of the year running because he just gets to take open threes. Yeah. Dorian Finney Smith made a career out of it. Yeah. yeah. Right? Steph, Steph I just looked at you're Steph's age. Steph's thirty six. You can play for probably maybe like one maybe one or two more years. You just go if you're going to say you just go for it now, whatever yeah. that looks like. And if it's a disaster post Steph, well then so what? hey, you won four titles yeah. with Steph then Curry you, and you went for yeah, it and like we'll just go through this up. now. Yeah. 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 I'll so just they, 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 the Lakers, the Warriors, it's all the same stuff. You go for everything now with LeBron and Steph, and if it's if it's if if you have to pay a price for that once they're gone, then you just pay the price for it. Who's a bigger genius than Bob Myers? Right, got out, got out of there. <laughs> he, yeah. he walked out of the buildings on fire. Yeah, he's like, you he know knew. what? I'm on TV now. He knew. Well, like, that, was, that was part of the motivation for him walking away wins. I don't have to make these hard decisions. Yeah, I'm, I'm the guy who built the championships. Hey, I don't have to make the hard they, decisions. They changed the game, though. So I mean, I know I'll rag on them, but they changed, they changed basketball hey, forever. So hey, here, here is another thing that people have not brought up, and that is, I think, a real possibility. What if they do? Just decide, and they do keep Clay, but they move off of Draymond. That's hey, what I, said. Like, I hey, just, yeah, I think they're going to trade Draymond. We got, we got think, an address for him right here. I think everybody there is sick of it. They are definitely sick of it. But, and I think that that's probably – where who, you're not sick of Clay, well, right? But, and, and just but having who, him around. Who, but who – I know, like, are, who I, invites I, that into their I take Draymond Me, in a heartbeat. I want him here. I take him in a heartbeat. Gary, but the I problem want number is, 23, so green issue, jerseys, but the issue all Bill is, Street. The issue yes, is I've what you give up for yes. We had Matt Barnes. We had yeah. Stephen Adams. Why not? There's nothing new under the sun. Why not Draymond? The issue is what you give up for him. Okay. Because he's one more away from getting suspended for a Season. Steph Curry give can't keep him in line. Who's going to keep him in line here? Look, look. Steph Curry can't Steph, keep him in Steph line. Who's going to keep him in line? Marcus Steph don't Smart. talk. Marcus Smart. Marcus Smart. I don't know. They can yeah, put no. the gloves on. Nobody. Battle it out. Derrick Rose. Yeah, Derrick Rose will Dr talk to him. Hey, we're, we're going to have Derrick Rose just talking to everybody all the time. You don't have. Like, you don't. And the, the, I the want him to have. So Derrick bad. just down there running. Draymond. So bad. It would be hilarious. There's not a personality big enough. I refrained from sending a wild tweet about the Warriors last night because I had a feeling that he's going to spin the block and be here next year. Had to like I actually, I, I will say this. I do not think Kleiman would do that. I think Kleiman will add play, a player that fits their timeline. So I think you're looking more at the yeah. Claxton, Hartenstein, maybe Donovan Klingon or mm -hmm. whoever is possible in the draft. Maybe. I, I, I don't think that, I don't think they'd bring in. I, I don't think they'd bring him in. They're I adding him. I, they are. Not just in do the Do I draft. think he could they be good basketball-wise? Of course I do. Yes. Right? And having him next to Jaron Jackson yeah. Jr. to do all the dirty work while Jaron operates the way he does. <gasps> but, but I also think that it's probably more likely that the Warriors move off of him and that the Grizzlies find your prototypical center that is good and best with Morant. A finish above the rim guy. Like a hard right? style. Well, somebody, just somebody that can... Set that pick and roll to the basket hard. Yeah. That's it. 
That's yeah, all you need. Yeah. I think they've always wanted somebody that could be the high flyer, right? Yeah. Just somebody that Jock could throw lives to. They just got it in Dallas, and you see how well that's working with Gafford. Yeah. They have lives for that lively, matter. They got two of them. They all you got to do is finish lives. Yeah. Because Jock's going to come around the screen, and then he's going to loft it up. Right. Yeah. And then you got to be able you to finish Brandon it. Right? Because, because, and, and, right. Because Brandon Clark is amazing at it. And you've got Jaron standing over at the three point line. Yeah. Yep. Right? So that's the kind of center you need more so than. You know, somebody that's doing all the the below-the-rim dirty work. Okay. You did this yesterday with me, Dev, and Tony. You brought it up. You inspired me here with DeMar DeRozan. Top 10 minutes played in the NBA this season. DeMar DeRozan is number one, 2,989 minutes. Minutes played. You each get to go. You miss one, you're out. Oh, just name all the Knicks. Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson is number 10. All the Knicks. J- by, Josh by Hart. The, but, what, you would go one by one, Dad. Oh, my bad, my bad. Yeah, my learn bad. how to play the damn game. My, my bad. Okay. You sorry. should be a vet in this by now. Sorry, but, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Jalen Brunson's number 10. So who gets that one? Mir GP. He does. I think, yeah, I think I did. Josh Hart. Josh Hart is not in the top 10. He's You're number already out. out. He's You're number, literally already out. He is You're number out. 11. What? Number 11. How He's about jumped. Jason Tatum? Jason Tatum is not in the top 10. He's to number blow 16. Out. To me, blow out. Sits out. Sits He's out number 16. But he plays all the games. I know, but he sits them out. Wait, what? Why? I'm going to go with Scotty Pippen Jr., you're not <laughs> Scotty Pippen Jr. He's by himself. Man. How about Gildas Alexander? Yes, yes. Not in the top 10 in minutes played. Luka. Luka Doncic. Not in the top 10 in minutes played. Okay. Are these just not stars? Uh, they are stars. Braun? No. Uh, they are stars. There's only we're not, Okay, one, so we're not going minutes per game. We're going two, There's oh, only minutes. like three oh, of Anthony them. Edwards. Anthony, Anthony Edwards, Edwards is sure. number eight. That's a good one. Yeah, he plays every game. Yeah, he wants Anthony to play every Edwards game. Anthony Edwards is number eight. And you said it's not all the Knicks. Devin Booker. No, not in the top he 10. He missed a lot of games. Yeah, he missed a lot of games. Let's see. How about oh, oh, I got one. LeBron. I not in I the top no. 10. Jokic. Jokic is number nine. Okay. Uh, Fox. De'Aaron Fox. Not in the top 10. Y'all are missing two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Who else plays their guys a lot of minutes? See, I'm trying oh, to Giannis. Start. No, not in the top ten. Donovan Col- Mitchell? Not in the top ten. James Harden? Not in the top Paul ten. Paul George? Not in the top Paolo. ten. Paolo? Paolo is number five. <coughs> so Ty- Ty- Maxie. Yeah, okay. Max- Maxie. Max- Max- Tyrese Max- Maxie. Tyrese Maxie's 18th. So Dang I will on. tell you, two, three, four, six, and seven. So this seven, four, and three are not like all-stars, but... Two and six have been all. Brown, Jalen Brown. You know who these Jaylen guys Brown. are. No. Seven, four, and three are not. Oh, Mikel Bridges. Mikel Bridges is number four. He hasn't missed a game in six years. Yeah. Shout out to Chipotle. You see he's eight in Chipotle every day for ten years? Yeah. yeah That's Mik- his key. Mikel Bridges impressive. is number four. The other two that you that are not all-stars, they're in the Eastern Conference. Not Jamal Murray. Okay, I got one. And they play tonight. And oh. they play tonight. Uh, so DeRozan, Kobe White. Kobe White, third in the NBA in minutes played. What? 2,881. Power of the hair. Okay. I got one. Bogdan Bogdanovich. No, no. It's, it's Murray. It's DeJounte Murray. He's number seven. Vernon's favorite player. Yeah. Yeah. Is that Bogdanovich. all of them? Nope. You're missing number two and number six. The number all, two we're missing is the two a star? You are missing a massive, massive star in the NBA. A massive, massive star in Yo, the NBA. This time Yo. All, all NBA player, multiple, a double digit all star. He's an MVP. He's won finals MVP. Russell Westbrook? No. No. He's won finals MVP. It's Kawhi not Kawhi Leonard, Leonard no. bro. He's won two of them. Kevin Durant. Durant. Kevin Durant is sixth Nobody in the NBA KD? in minutes played. I would not have thought he'd six in minutes played. Me neither. Yeah, KD. Shots of the. Uh, and we're missing number two. Yeah. And that's not a star. Yeah, he's a star. Like how? What's the level? He of stars is here? not. He's been an all star. He has been an all star. Jamal McGlue has been an all star. Right. Let me see how many he's made. Yeah. Let's make sure he made it multiple times. I'm pretty sure he's made it multiple. Times. He's been an all star. He we is. haven't said we, it's, it's He's not a three-time da- All-Star. It's not Dame. Dame's like an eight-time All-Star. He's a three-time All-Star, all recent, all in the last four years. All in the last four years? He's made three All-Stars in the last Anthony four Davis, years. Anthony Davis. Is it AD? No. Bam out of bio? Anthony Davis is not far off here. AD has 12th in minutes played. No, not Bam. 
Demontis Sabonis. Demontis Sabonis. Ah. Second in the NBA in minutes played, 2,928. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What did he end up with last night in that game against? He, uh, he didn't have nothing. It wasn't nothing crazy. It wasn't. It was a. Uh, it was like light. I think he had like. Let's see. I got a satellite right here. It was more of like Keegan Murray. Keegan Murray had thirty-two. He had sixteen and twelve, yeah. and seven assists. It was Keegan Murray. What's that dude? Ellis. Keon. Keon. Bro, he is a dog, bro. No, he, he played well dog. last night. He's exactly I like him the, earlier. He's exactly for the wrong team, but he played well last night. Exactly, I got my double header mixed up, but he was great last night. He's like the Vince Williams thing. He is like Vince. It's the it, it, or the Tony Allen thing. It's like these teams stumble on these role players they would have otherwise never stumbled yep, upon. And now he's a starter. And did you see that thing? He went to a JUCO. He's like JUCO. And then, like, has been in the G League. Do you remember him from the G League at all? Keon Ellis, we had them. I had him one time, I think. It was the 10 a.m. game. Oh, it really? Was the 10 oh, wow. Game. Yeah. I mean, I, and I don't really remember him at Bama. Not me either. They said Alabama last night. I said when. <laughs> when he played Alabama. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember do you him. remember him from college? Yeah, I do. He only played two years. Um, he averaged 12 points his sophomore year. Yeah. He was just a guy. He was just a guy. But well, how long ago was he there? Two years ago. Two years ago. Yeah. So, so he was on the. Collar. So he wasn't on the Brandon Miller team. Year before Brandon Miller. I guess so. so he that was have Quinterly. Been, He'd have been with John Quinterly. One Colin was it? No, no. Colin wasn't there. God, no. Colin Texas right. has been it, in the NBA be for six years, dude. 2022. Jaden Shackelford, Javon Quinterly, Keon Ellis, JD I, Davison. I take it back. Oh, who's the coach there at that time? Nate Oates, Noah Gurley, huh. Charles Bidiaco. Yeah, this is, uh, huh? Yeah, he, he didn't oh, play. Oh, Herb? Or was Herb already gone? He was gone. He was gone. He didn't play in the game. In Keon the Ellis. Game. Yeah, he didn't play. He was in Herbert Jones was the year before. So I never oh, saw okay. him. Yeah. He played. Against, he played against Memphis. They said Josh Primo was the year before. There's been some NBA guys come through there. Wow. Yeah. Keon Ellis, dude, he was locking up. Uh, he was locking up Steph Curry he last was. night. He was the strip. He had a little strip in he the had lane. The strip. I was he, like, had, okay. he picked him clean hey, well, once. This happens to me, like when the playoffs start, because now I'll be like, okay, I'm watching the Kings tonight. Yep. What's happened with Davion Mitchell? Too little. Too little. He, he can't he's shoot. He's terrible at offense. Yeah, he can't yeah. shoot. Bro. That's the problem. Right there. They, they run away from. They run away from. I just noticed last night. I was like, oh wow, he hasn't. If you it can't make. Happened. If you can't make shots. Right. Yeah. They they run away. Which is why, like, okay, okay, so. You're exactly right. And then I look at mock drafts, and it's like now people are in love with Stephon Castle again. Yeah. It's like he doesn't make shots. Right. What are we doing? The, I would tell you that the thing with Castle is they think he does so many other things really well and that it is something that <coughs> can develop. That what you can't develop is all that stuff that he is Six awesome at. Six, five, and this. Yeah, and that, and that he's not a – terrible free throw shooter and many times that can be indicative of whether or not your shot is broke or not right yeah. and so they figure that it can be like a conley situation yeah. conley couldn't make shots and yeah. then he came to uh, first three years of his career and now he's dead eye yeah, he became a really good well, you know three point shooter make shots it's just if you've got that work ethic to go in there and be able to well, make shots the one i remember like that doesn't fit this is like if you go look at his shooting numbers in college they were not good or not elite, right? And people like totally were like, "Don't care," because he can really shoot it. Bradley Bill. Ah, uh, yeah. I remember Bradley Bill. Like you look, like you. If you just looked at the numbers, it was like, "Is he really a shooter?" And the yep. NBA people just disregarded the number. They're like, "No, he's elite." Kawhi's and, weren't good either. No, yeah, Kawhi's yeah. a yeah. terrible State, shooter. It was like well, not a good and, shooter. And at I all think I think you've just got to. I think in the castle sense, you've got to be just so overwhelming and all the other stuff right. that they think. If that develops, but we still think you're going to be awesome, even if it doesn't. Like Gilgis Alexander, like John Moran, right. like yeah. Russell Westbrook, like you know Zion Williamson. He can't shoot, right? Uh, right. He, he but, like, all, but all he those guys you named, like, got where they were trying to get to. That's and, right. And Castle yeah. didn't really do that. He's not. Yet. He's not explosive. But he like wasn't that. asked to either at right. UConn. Um, they say he's like the best, though. Oh, he, he like he, teammate well, he came for in, a five star guy he, to for, for, like he, play he, in a winning did, concept. He did like what that. Derrick Rose did. Right. He joined a bunch of older guys and said, "I just want to be the young guy on this, surrounded by older guys, and I'll play a role." And then he had a big moment in the Final Four. No, I like all that, and Dan Hurley loves him. I like that part of it. Yep. It's just I'm now reached a point where Reed Shepard can shoot. I like that. Jacoby Walter can shoot. Oh, sure. I like that. This other guy can't shoot. Man, that. Yeah. I can't tell you how many guys get picked in the lottery. Yeah. And if you go look at the question marks heading into the draft, it's like, 
needs to improve shooting. And you look up and it's like year three in the NBA and it's like, can't shoot. That's right. Oh, because they sit in that gym all it's day. It's a million of them. They sit there all day. Like, you were talking about like small guys, like you mentioned the Davion. Uh, Jose Alvarado's little. That's but right. he knocked down an open tray. That's right. As long as you can knock down an open shot. <laughs> Do you remember that? Remember that clip with him that went viral? They had people mic'd up. Oh yeah, that was at the that was at the uh, rookie sophomore game, uh, the Rising Stars game. Yeah. Was so Alvarado's playing in that game. Yeah. And uh, somebody clearly is in the game, doesn't know who he is. Yeah. And it, they, like he, Alvarado's coming down the court. I might be making some of this up, but the gist of it's right. Alvarado's coming down the court, and somebody's like, "Is he a shooter? Is he a shooter?" And he like. He's, yeah, I'm a shooter. Yeah, yeah. Hey, there, there you go. You hey. trying to know? Do I need to pick this up or not? You can. And he just pulled it. You can shoot. You good? Because Davion can clamp up. It's just he can't. Bro, when he, he get the ball, they be running away from him, bro. Right. Right. And I'll give credit because it was seen for Chicago tonight that our old buddy Javon. Javon, that's same what way. Javon figured out though. Yeah. Javon could clamp up, and now he shoots like high 30 from three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you can play. Right. You can play. Right. His guy they got to be able to swing it to you and you be able to shoot <laughs> You have it. to be able to make that shot. Or you have to you be have comfortable to. taking it. Yes. You have to make it where your coach if, – if if you ever get to a point where your coach doesn't want you taking that shot, right. you can't play. Dude, no. You saw last night because it's going to go swing, swing, and like Keon Hills knocking him down. Right. Knocking him down. Bro. That's how Vince is going to stay in the league. Yep. Exactly, because Vince he was, proved that he could just knock it down. Automatic. If you're gonna, if, you're, if I'm going to be the guy, you're not going to guard. I can knock this shot down. Because our boy DB was he's who oh boy, swing swing, buddy. Yeah. By the way, I said Keon Ellis had 19 and six against Memphis when they played against us. Yeah. So yeah, he was he's a hooper. Shout out Keon Ellis, bro. Do yeah. it for the grind. Yeah, so Zion is out. Of course he is. Yeah. It, it, they, but it's, it's, it's officially the Pelicans have announced. Oh, they have. Yeah, yeah. they did him dirty the, last night. Yeah, Willie Green did not help. Did. Why the hell did they say leg soreness? Because if they say hamstring, I go, well, that's it. Yeah. If they say leg soreness, people. I was like, bro, stress this like, shit out, bro. Will be. Yeah, right. Right. And, it, and it's long. And it's longer than that. Even or, if they win, they, you know, I saw a lot of the Adam Silver made the call. Well, it's just they want to be like Lakers got to win. Well, it's just that they want to be so. I think some of these staffs. Are so intentionally vague now. I, we I don't want you to be able to prepare for life without. Well, Zion. I had just never heard, like go search at injury reports or just media reports from ten years ago. You will never see something that says lower body injury or lower leg injury. It, it's it's always more specific. It's what just in that? recent years where it's starting to be like that's right above the shoulders injury, <laughs> below the hip. Oh no, we, were, no, we had a couple what lower a, body hey, joints. What a mess that was last night though, because now Zion Williamson is out. And you think about this, they're two, three, and four guys: McCollum, Ingram, Valanciunas. <coughs> they were all benched in the fourth. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now you've got to go in and beat the Kings. Right. What what you hopefully you can trust them dudes to do it. Right. But you just put on the bench against and the Lakers. They, even That's if you right. win, though. Because when just, it mattered yeah. most. I couldn't have you out there. I couldn't have you Two, out. three, and four. Yeah. And even if you win, what? I mean, they said, like, Zion's not going to be – so he's done. He would be done for the first round anyway. Well, yeah, they, so I need the Kings. He's not going to be really evaluated Kings, for weeks. Okay, the Kings need to win then, bro. Yeah. If I ain't watching the Pelicans with Ingram, CJ McCollum, and – who else? In the I mean, what? O- Valentinus. Oklahoma yeah. City, New Orleans. Two small markets with no Zion. Yeah, we ain't, I'm good on that. <laughs> I'm yeah, straight on that one. That's going to be on True TV. Yeah. <laughs> Put that No, I'm good. That's on coming on. At least they wouldn't play that. That's, that's Duquesne hey, Butler. That's I, coming I, on after I, practical I, I'm a, jokers hey, or whatever they go. This is the only thing I will say on that, though. I wouldn't hate it that much because at least that's another Central Time Zone series. Because if they play Sacramento, those are not. Oh games. yeah, we oh, yeah. Gonna be and I have to record late. <laughs> it's gonna be nine o'clock. I, I, I have to record like, bro, the mismatch on, after these yeah. late games. Yeah, I don't have to record. No, I can sleep right through that. <laughs> Pelicans, <laughs> King, uh, Kings, OKC, okay, and now I'm staying up for it Ooh, on a Tuesday night. Nah, Ooh, that's nasty. I'm not with it. Now nah, you about to have to go through uh, the, what I have to go through. Uh, like you do it, record at two in the morning. Thanks. Nah. All right. We did a quick break. We'll be back into this. Thanks, Gary. Bye bye. Uh, Jessica Benson will be in studio. Chris Vernon Show. Now for a limited time, the new $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps are here at Sonic. Who could deny a crispy chicken tender with bold flavors like hickory barbecue and cheesy Baja? And we can't forget the crisp lettuce and melty cheese to make the perfect bite. Wrap yourself up with some TLC, tender, love, and chicken for only $1.99. 
Sonic $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps. Tax not included. Limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. Did I invent this? Loki? Did you? I spent years calling my ex-producer, Cowboy Carson, and now Beyonce. She and decides she, she, wants wind? To, she wants to dabble in country, in the genre. Now she's calling her album Cowboy Carter. When she's doing her next concert, okay. and she says, hey, my new album's about to come out, uh, inspired. Cowboy Carter. I inspired just, by The Gary Parish Show. Shout out GP in yeah. Memphis. The Gary Parish Show, live weekdays at 10 a.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. We know there's only one team you want to watch. And Valley Sports is the place to get your Grizzlies. Experience the comebacks, the buzzer beaters, the can't-miss Memphis-made moments live. Valley Sports keeps the grind going before and after the game, too, with Pete, Brevin, Fish, and Chris on Grizzlies Live. Watch Grizzlies basketball all season long with Valley Sports and streaming on the Valley Sports app. Valley Sports, home of the only team you want to watch. Vince Williams is going to go to All-Star Weekend. Now, what a great thing for him. Kudos to, to Vince Williams Jr. You know, um, he was an injury replacement on the Panini Rising Stars. He'll get a chance to be part of the All-Star Weekend Showcase. Hey, Grizzlies fans, be sure to tune in to Grizzby, where the panel and I break down all things Grizzlies and take a look at the rest of the NBA as well. The show is live every Wednesday, 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. When it's all on the line, you turn to the strong, the stable, the unwavering, to those with a history of raising their performance to meet the moment. It's true in basketball. It's true in banking. Grizzlies checking from Pinnacle. Play hard. Bank easy. Open a Grizzlies checking account with at least $100 and a recurring direct deposit by January 12th, and you could receive a $200 direct deposit bonus into your account and be entered into our Grizzmas drawing. Details at grizzliesbanking.com. Member FDIC. LifeCare Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At LifeCare, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at LifeCareAMB.com. It's more fun to be there live to see the Memphis Grizzlies hit the court all season long. From the electricity and FedEx Forum to the highlight reel plays, there's nothing quite like Grizzlies basketball. As the official marketplace of the Memphis Grizzlies, Ticketmaster gets you in with a huge selection of seats. So get off the couch and into the stands while you still can. Score tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. That's Ticketmaster.com. Today, we have two very special guests on our program. Introducing Lem hey. and Lime. Hello. For Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Thanks for having us. What is Starry Lemon Lime Soda? It's a crisp, clear burst of lemon lime flavor, and it's caffeine free. Between us, one of you must be a little more important to Starry than the other. Who is it? We're both important. So we could just as easily be Starry Lime Lemon Soda. No, that doesn't sound right. Oh, I like it. So you saying hip hop could be hop hip? Works for me. Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Starry hits different. We know there's only one team you want to watch. And Valley Sports is the place to get your Grizzlies. Experience the comebacks, the buzzer beaters, the can't-miss Memphis-made moments live. Valley Sports keeps the grind going before and after the game, too, with Pete, Brevin, Fish, and Chris on Grizzlies Live. Watch Grizzlies basketball all season long with Valley Sports and streaming on the Valley Sports app. Valley Sports, home of the only team you want to watch. Welcome back to the Chris Vernon Show on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app presented by Caesar Sportsbook. Now, back to your host, Chris Vernon. Microphone one, two, one, two. Pack the whole place out. Watch what I do. I've been all around the world. Watch me make these moves. And I did it my way. Watch me break these rules. Yeah. I'm coming now. Get up out of my way. Oh, it's my time now. Better watch what you say. Trained all my life like every day. Cause it's game time now. Oh, and we don't play. Yeah. What you know about? You don't really know about. Tell me what you know about. What you really know about. 
All right, we're back. Chris Learning Show. Go get that Caesar Sportsbook app. You can go to your app store. You can type in Caesar Sportsbook and you can download it for free. You can use it legally in the state of Tennessee. And new users get up to $1,000 back as a bonus bet. If you lose your first wager, using the code GCM1000, GCM1000. Caesars Sportsbook. You got the numbers for tonight? I do. All right, so the first game is Philly and the Heat. Yes. It's in Philly, right? It is in Philly. I'll say Philly. Oh, shit. Four and a half? Close. Yeah, close. Five and a half. Five and a half. Oh, okay. I wasn't that far off. Uh, Five and a half, yeah. All right, and the uh, late is Chicago, Atlanta. Where, is that game in Chicago or in Atlanta? It's in Chicago. It's in the Shy. In the Shy, the Windy City. God, I don't know. Chicago one, Chicago <laughs> three. <laughs> yeah, I might, bro. I'm sorry. I might, not, I might not even make it to that game, bro. I'm sorry. It's at eight thirty. You'll make. It. I might. You know what I'm saying I might fire oh, on the you PS. You might not watch the it. PS Five. Might be cranked off by the end. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Watching Go Hawks Bulls. and Bulls is nasty. You're rooting for the Bulls. Yeah. Why? Uh, I like Kobe White. That is your I, guy. I like DeRozan. I do. I think Demar Derozan's underappreciated. I like Demar Derozan. I think DeMar DeRozan could be like a solid number two, number three on a title team. I think he could. No. Yeah, probably. Too. Yeah, no. I think he could. Okay. Jessica Benson from the Jessica Benson Show, which you can watch and listen to every morning at 8 o'clock on Grind City Media, YouTube, and everywhere you get your podcast. Joins us weekly to give us caught up yes. to date on what's going on in the world of pop culture and entertainment. What do we got? We have so much. This oh, week. we I'm do? Actually, yeah. You well, love this. Like some weeks I get more excited than others. Okay. This, I, this week I'm very excited. Uh, a lot of music stuff. The biggest music weekend of the year, or double weekend, Coachella. Oh. We were just talking oh. about that. We were just talking about Coachella. Yeah. I saw some of the uh, sets. Okay. Right? I saw, I saw the Tyler the Creator thing was awesome. Yes. My boy Tyler killed yes, it. I watched the whole set. Rihanna was there with ASAP Rocky, and ASAP Rocky came out for a couple songs, so that was fun. Yeah. Potato uh, salad. And Rihanna being anywhere is always a big, big moment. This was weekend one. So okay. weekend two is next weekend. How I, long is it? Three days. Wait, two so weekends. It's, Friday, it's Saturday, two Sunday, Friday, weekends. Friday, Saturday, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. And it's the same lineup, but you get like different guests. That's okay. That's always what happens. So my favorite performance of week one, and they they do a really good job streaming. Shout out Coachella for not gatekeeping the whole thing, because you can just sit at home and yep. stream on YouTube, and the sound quality is good, and sometimes the visuals are a little wacky, but for the most part, it's like an actual enjoyable experience. And so Lana Del Rey performed. It was her first time since 2014. I saw Lana Del Rey at Coachella in 2014, which is when I fell in love with her then. She's taken a hiatus, um, but she came in on a motorcycle. The big moment was Billie Eilish was her guest. Awesome. It was great. It was wonderful. Had a nice little friendship moment, but the expectation, or not the expectation, the rumor, the hypothesis is that Taylor Swift will be joining this weekend because Taylor's album, which I did not make its own separate thing, but the Tortured Poets Society, comes out this weekend all of those easter eggs like i feel very left out i feel like this is how people who don't follow sports feel when we all talk about sports but taylor swift fans who are finding the easter eggs of what her album is going to be it just really leaves me so the so the rumor is that she's going to show up at coachella because when she won at the grammys this year she weirdly pulled lana del rey up that was the woman that she pulled up to like stand behind her while she was giving her acceptance speech and she doesn't have a i guess people have done the research to find out she doesn't have a show she doesn't have a show she was at coachella last weekend she and travis were there together anytime they show up they're they're the there was like a rumor they were going to show up at the masters and they were at coachella instead they were hanging so that could have been her supporting in that moment Uh, people don't really no, but if she shows up at Coachella with Lana Del Rey, that would be just a death-defying. Yeah, week. right. Uh, the other big ones, No Doubt performed. That was their reunion. Their first time, so Gwen Stefani joined oh, up wow. with No Doubt. Olivia Rodrigo came out for a song, which was fun from, like, punk of the past, punk of the future. But hearing Don't Speak, like, just songs that you haven't heard yeah. in a minute was a very fun thing. Doja Cat had a really good set. If you're looking, Lauren Hill actually showed up to support her son, YG Marley, who has a new song that's gone... Super viral, but he also had a whole set at Coachella. You have to be pretty big at this point. Did Lauren Hill sing? I don't know. Because she's she supposed sang. to be here with the she, Fugees, right? Yeah. So that's. I think it's fool's gold to assume that Lauren yeah, Hill is going to never. be here with the Fugees. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but just know. seeing her in public did, I will admit, for a hot second, I was like, maybe. Have we doomed it too early? Well, you know, like, she, got, she got in big trouble with the tax stuff, so she may need the money. She could. She, probably um, does the she did perform a couple weeks ago somewhere. I was following someone on Twitter who was at one of her shows who was timing 
how long it took for her to <laughs> come out. She did eventually come out. She did. And do the show. All right. Um, well, Renee Rapp brought out Kesha, and they redid the song TikTok. I haven't Wake heard up her in name in 10 years. Kesha? She went through a whole thing with abusive music producer, and now she's trying to come out in oh, her geez. new era. Oh, but they changed Wake Up in the Morning feeling like P. Diddy to Wake Up in the Morning and F. P. Diddy. So good. that was a good, good for her. fun viral moment. Is she still moment. brushing her teeth with a bottle of Jack? Yeah, maybe we're at that. I'll Victoria Monet's set was awesome. Uh, Ice Spice. Threw back. She had a sidekick. I hadn't thought about, you know, the phone. Oh, okay. She had like a blinged out sidekick, which was cool. Lil Uzi Vert. And then uh, I'm oh, a big... Oh, wait. You didn't mention Lil Uzi Vert thing that had the internet going crazy? Yeah, so explain. He was out of pocket. What did he do? He started voguing on the stage, bro. Oh, come on. <laughs> he did. <laughs> he What's did. wrong with you? He was like doing the full like thing, bro. Thing. He like dropped yeah. into like a little split thing. I was like, oh, hell no. Isn't he like five feet tall? Yes, bro. He was, yeah. out, he was out of pocket. He, he really is little. He's 5'4". Four. For the rest of us, 5'4s in the world. Please mm. respect those extra four inches. Yeah, yeah okay. Well, Sorry. We're all there. Little <laughs> Vert. But anyway, I love Coachella. So it was fun to see, and I like that you can stream it, and I wish more things were streamable in this world. Yeah. That brings us to our next music. Music story. I'm here. I am finally diving in on the rap beef. I, I'm in. Oh, right now. like we've oh, talked BBL about it. Drizzy? Like we've You've talked, been on the outside. I've been on the outside looking. It hasn't felt like genuine, like grade A beef. <laughs> it's felt like a little like Whole Foods beef up until this part. But the person who's dragged me in is Rick Ross. Rick Ross has entered. He had a diss track that came out, and it actually feels. Have you listened to it, Roser? Of course. Listened to it several. Yeah, we, of course, we, we you've tapped listened in to, be, to, to this BBL times. Drizzy beef. Oh, you're 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 invading our group. Fantastic. Yeah, right right this now. is all Fantastic. we talk about. Okay, so BBL then we can actually Drizzy. go through it because now. Yeah. You know, you kind of hang out on the fringes, and you don't really care. But now it feels like like a fuse has perhaps oh, yeah. been lit in a legit way. So for people who have not followed, who need the, like, what do we call them? Spark notes at yep. this point? We used Pink Monkey when I was, did you have Pink Monkey? We used Cliff Notes. Cliff, Cliff Notes. notes yeah. Spark Cliff Notes. There were all kinds. I don't know. Whatever you bought to get through things. But so it's been three weeks since Like That came out. Kendrick's verse on the Metro Boomin Future album. Uh, where he took offense to being included in the big three with Drake and J. Cole. Th that song is a hit. It's still number one. Yep. That's the thing. It's not just a casual diss track. Like, it's a bona fide summer, I'm not going to call it's it a bop, but it's a banger. It's a banger. It's a summer it's, banger. It's a hit. Yeah, so it felt sure. like it opened the door for everyone to get on Drake. And we had the J. Cole thing last week where he dropped the song and then he took it back and now no one will respect J. Cole ever again because it is lame and unforgivable and maybe it was like a nice thing to do as a person but in the spirit of competition what a loser what a lame oh, oh, we will never hold forget hold him on. hold on as a Cole stare I think Cole knew what was about to happen so mm. my guy Cole took a step back it's like it's like knowing that somebody about to come through. Well, you a, so defended what, that track, and then I did, and then, and then your hero came out and said yeah. that was the lamest thing I've ever done. Yeah, I had to because we got to fight for Cole. But Cole knew that uh, the no. bulldozer were coming was coming through. Yeah. So Cole yeah. said, "Let me take a step back and let y'all just fight it out." So go. Okay. What do you say about because then this past Friday you get another album from it, Future and, and Metro there. Boomin and Cole is on that. We, we still, still don't, don't trust, trust you. Just in case there was any question, right. we don't trust you. We still don't trust you. So what don't. do you make of Cole having a track the, on that? The streets, the, so people are saying the, the verse may have been old, but I still think the ver I think that Cole's just being Cole. He's just rapping, bro. He's, I'm, I'm not in between this beef. Y'all fight each other. I'm still rapping. I okay. actually like it. That's the most real he's ever been on the... Uh, on the on the, on this the new one, not yes, the most because real. he's ba because he's basically saying I'm not that guy, I'm the I'm the conscious <laughs> I'm, I'm the con guy. I'm the conscious rapper guy. <laughs> I'm not yes, I'm not for yeah, all this. Keep, keep hating on well, Cole. Else is. Keep talking now, about the beat, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I was just hating so on they're Cole. They're never believable when it's like I got shooters sure. and I got this nine and I got the, like shut up. I mean, yeah. listen yeah. about a rap. None of them dudes got guns either. But continue. Suddenly, the weekend <laughs> is in on it, and like we knew the weekend and Drake, despite both being Canadian, That's had right. some beef because there was the whole Bella Hadid situation. The OVO sweatshop. Cup Rocky had a track, essentially just flexing that he ended up with Rihanna. Rihanna, and then Rick Ross. You forget about Jaw, huh? And I was gonna mention okay. the Jaw piece because he. Okay. Drake goes for Bottle. everyone. Yes, he does. Right. So anyone who's involved, and Jaw catches a stray, which from yeah. a Memphis standpoint is like, ooh. Yeah. Is that a reference to R12? That yeah. rapper that be that, that Hooper that be gritty in. And now, yes, and and apparently now, and, and everyone is, dated the same girl over a six-week <laughs> stretch. And, 
It's quick. Hey, push the tree toes. He's the I pillow think we talker. We use the word dated a little generous. Yeah, I mean, maybe they would have had interest in maybe. each other. Maybe some times maybe. together. Push, yes. push warned us about Jersey Drake being a pillow, pillow yeah. talker. And you yeah. still liked him. <laughs> but you get to this point where, like, even like, like, Uma music. Thurman gets involved. Right? So Uma yeah. Thurman, the actress known from Kill yes. Bill, but more notably uh, was in the musical movie version of The Producers, which was my favorite Uma Thurman <laughs> performance. But she is offering up her Kill Bill costume to Drake because it, quarterly it's like one versus an army. So when Uma Thurman steps in, you're like, oh no, this is taken. This is going to be a decide. Why does everybody not like this guy? Yeah. Because he's that's, corny. That, right. And that's cringy. What, uh, why does everybody yeah. not like Because he's a millennial. Like, they all, that's what how can no, they, they all not? I like the they guy. They all don't. That's what I. And, and here, this is the other thing. It became bro. mob yes. mentality. It was like, yeah. oh, we don't like him. Cool. None of us really no, like him. Like right. And Rick Ross, especially, because right. there have been enough sure. collabs between the two. Passion, you would just assume music. that there was something. And well, then he drops champagne right, moments and just goes out there and flat out calls him a white boy. Well, yeah. Future you know, and Metro <laughs> did an entire album fake with ads. Drake. So he got a nose job. So he got a nose, nose job. We, we know. Push said he wears dockers with no underwear. Like, what are we doing here? Push the T said, that's how you get the Drake the most to call him a white boy because he wanted his naps to curl so bad well, and it does cause him to snap because then he like releases the weird text with his mom talking yeah. about rick ross claiming that he has a no job and then that's on the outro of that also on that outro is the comment about how rick ross had to get involved in a cease and desist that drake sent to french montana yeah. for a verse to be removed from something earlier this year of course the internet has now found that verse and within that verse he, it's drake rapping about sleeping with another rapper's wife and now you're like oh my god is it's that kim, kim kardashian, kardashian is kim yeah. k involved and now is kanye gonna have a diss track and now, I'm interested. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. and all these now. years, people say that Drake was low key just a slimy well, and, dude, and it's all coming out. Now. And Lil and Rick Ross posted less on Instagram. The ghost, because everybody talks. About, the it's ghost one writing. thing when it's yeah. one person. It's it, it is when it's one person who says you've got a ghostwriter. It's whatever. There's all of these guys coming out saying, bro, you have ghostwriters for you. Like, right. you do not write all this stuff. You have ghostwriters for you, and you try to claim that it's your own. And Rick Ross put out Yachty the Pen or whatever. Like, yeah, Lil Yachty is one of his ghostwriters. One person one you don't want to be with, Verno, is Ricky Ross Rose on social media. Trust. Some folks, what's it, DJ Envious? He's hilarious. DJ Envious. Yeah. Rick Ross is so funny. He's funny. You, don't, He's you can't funny. beef with funny dudes, bro. Yeah. Beefing funny. with the funny and, dude and is, and is, is a, you can lose that battle. Rick Ross and Pusha T, two amazing artwork covers for your diss tracks. Man, the story yeah. of the yes. D-Don and then this one, Champagne Mo I, I mean, the, I the know you wear, I know you wear your doctors so with perfect. no underwear, white boy. Yeah, <laughs> like, bro, I love it so much. Well, how, 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 how does this end? How does this end? That's my question. Like, how does this end? You well, think? I don't know. Someone has to hold Kanye back from keep on doing okay, anything yeah, Kanye within this doesn't moment. Need to enter he will, but he doesn't need to. He does not need to. This is not his lane. This is not his lane. Kendrick is going to write back some, like, prophetic amazing flame job yeah. of drake don't you think because that's i mean within yes. drake's thing drake actually had what did you think of drake's um diss track back the push-ups it was, it was, it was the drake. way it is kendrick destroying him saying all kinds of horrible things that drake the, the, and then drake complains about it getting personal when he goes on lebron's sure. show on hbo because yeah. I, I mean drake yeah. did call kendrick short so. yeah he did he said he wears a size like five shoe yeah. seven. He it, it size seven shoe was which good, is, that was actually a good line that's a very though. small shoe by the way how the f you big step in with a size seven men's yeah. on yeah. Yeah. no no he's got and then came tough. after him for collaborating with like maroon five and taylor swift and he's got good lines stuff. in there the problem is you, like a diss song like dude you, we don't need a four minute diss song it was a lot you need to like kendrick's gonna hurt his feelings that's what's gonna happen just like push it did yes I think Not Drake bad. still ends P up okay. Pusha hurt his feelings for real. Yeah, push, like push Pusha really hurt that man's feelings. Well, have hurt you seen feelings. the part where like he mentions um, Whitney? There's the Whitney line, and Kendrick's partner is Whitney, and some people yeah. think it was a double entendre yeah, with Whitney Houston yeah. and the bodyguard and sleeping with the bodyguard. So if you're coming from it in that standpoint, then yeah, maybe. There's still been the nothing harder gates. than you are hiding a child. Let that boy come home. You, you are hiding a child at the Izzo. Playing amazing border bar. patrol. Like, Shout out Pusha T. What Pusha T had at a beef like this? Okay. Out of the music world. Yeah. What we got? Into the women's agenda. Did you guys talk about the WNBA draft at all? Nah. Did you know 2.4 million Clark. people watched the WNBA draft? And I would not There's have included. There's nothing else on. That's true. But it's also a draft. Raw was on. And whenever... What was on? Raw. Oh, of WNBA wow. Raw. <laughs> nothing was on. Just kidding. I know people cared deeply yeah. about it. But to see 2.4 million, like it was astronomically more than anyone has ever watched the WNBA draft. We watched it in our household. And even I... 
supporter of all women. I've never made the WNBA draft appointment viewing. And my <coughs> husband and I, like, the thought was, okay, let's turn it on, watch Caitlin Clark, watch the first, like, five picks. Because you know all those women because they just played in the tournament and we're just talking about Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese and Camilla Cardosa and Cameron Brink. I went to a book club last night, though. I had zero expectations of talking about the WNBA draft. Talked about it for like 30 minutes. What? From a cultural moment. From a from a red carpet standpoint or an orange carpet in this standpoint. Really? All the outfits, rating the outfits, talking about the girls, Let's talking about up. Cameron Shut Brink up. and her mom who worked for Nike. And like the fact that they knew... All, for me, the to know, thing I is need gonna to be know. is this something that sustainable. sticks? And, yeah, yes. sustainable, or is it really just this flash in the pan right. Caitlin Clark phenomenon that just took over everything, put it on front street, and it also it also came. I've thought about this a lot. It also came at a perfect time where people had this feeling towards college sports where it was like that women's game represented everything we always loved about college which was we saw the same people playing against the same people developing multiple years in a row and it's like these are characters now in this play that's playing out whereas you know then you tune in and uh like every everybody in every college team is like playing for a different team. Next year, we're going to watch Jeremy Roach not playing for Duke. He's going to be playing for somebody else. And that's where I do think you have, and we've talked about this, like you have the edge of continuing the momentum on the college side because you have Paige Beckers who would have been Caitlin Clark if she hadn't been hurt and you could have had the two of them going up against it. But she goes back. You have the South Carolina team that's going to lock and reload and has a lot of young girls. And Dawn Staley as a character in itself is becoming one of those Gino Ariema, Pat Summit-esque figures within women's college basketball. You have Juju rising in the ranks. You have a couple other But there has to be somebody that, like, the thing with Caitlin was she smashed all the records. Yeah. I think you're going right? to watch Paige Beckers and think she's on Juju, Juju's on pace to do Juju can be on pace. She's on Starting pace with her freshman it. year. But it's like right now. Because you have to start the pace to be able yeah, to be in the conversation. Exactly. And she did. It's Juju like right did. now, though, like the reason, let's say uh, women's tennis, right? Mm-hmm. You can't name five women's tennis players right yeah, now. So like right? Co- Co- but Co- when Co- Serena Co- Williams started mashing everybody, everybody, other people everybody yes. was watching Serena yeah. Williams, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because she's the one. And it's like. It, who's the next one that's gonna like smash a record? Right. Be there in the final championship games, you know. But I'm really curious stuff. on the momentum into the WNBA. The one at USC Clark could do is, it. This is yeah. Juju. 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 is gonna be on national TV. Thirty six games. Thirty six games. Thirty six games. Right. The ticket games. prices are have gone from sixty dollars average to one hundred fifty plus. If you want to go see Caitlin Clark, you have an opportunity to go see the Indiana Fever versus the Chicago Sky, where it's going to be Angel Reese and Camilla Cardosa, the two players who kept Caitlin Clark. Like, those storylines have the potential. I mean, they're going to have to hammer home the marketing because I am not a believer. They have relied far too much on organic eyeballs and the trust that people are going to be there. No, you got to shove this down. Don't don't say nope, it. I don't I don't do it. Don't shove, don't shove anything down <laughs> anywhere. Fa- but she's but you famous, have to, famous. Oh yeah, no, yeah, she had the high. You see the jersey thing? It yeah. sold out. It yeah. sold at the highest. It says she, the fr- Fanatics' highest selling jersey in history. Yeah. Past Trevor I mean, Lawrence the fact that dressed, like, yeah, pa- yeah. And it's it was Prada's first time dressing yeah. someone. She hits step back threes and like it does things that we had just not seen. It's the fun element. What do we want to do? We don't want to have to watch something. It's never going to work to sit here and be like, everybody. I heard Gary talking about this yesterday, and I agree. You can't base this on a morality clause. Like, do you support women? You need to watch the WNBA. It'd be cool if people believed in that, but that's not going to be the case. It's going to be, do you love watching someone pull up from the logo, have the audacity to pull up from the logo? Cool. Here's Caitlin Clark. And then you're going to become familiar with, oh, Asia Wilson and this Las Vegas Aces team are fun as hell in their characters. And then it just, it gets spirals from there. So anyway, two point whatever million watching the WNBA crazy. draft is crazy, hey, even hey. if it's just within this And Nike, get your shit together, bro. They said them Caitlin Clark jerseys ain't shipping until June. Yeah. Oh, like August, bro. That's I saw someone crazy. say, welcome to being a WNBA fan. Yeah, bro. They ain't getting them. <laughs> now you know. That's crazy. Dude, now you know. they still haven't gotten the friggin' the, the fanatics still hadn't gotten Major League Baseball. Like, the Cardinals wear those baby blues. Yeah. They still don't have them. They're trying to protect you Are you all. serious? From yes. see-through yes. jerseys. From see-through jerseys, yeah. <laughs> trying to they protect still don't normal have men. Them. Yeah. yeah. For now, let's get your bro. Michael, what's his, Michael Rubin? Brutal, get it together, crazy. Bro. Those are brutal. He's I'm too busy up. hanging out on yachts with James Harden. And, and Lil Baby. Baby. Yeah. Lil Baby ain't been the same since because of Michael Scott. Rubin. 
I'm okay. blaming you, Michael Rubin. Little and baby ain't been the same Brady. since. You hug him from the back. Okay, this next one just came out this morning. Shout out John Roser for uh, sending it to me to make sure I saw it. We have learned that <coughs> Martin Scorsese and Leonardo DiCaprio are hoping to team up yet again. This is not official because Frank Sinatra's daughter owns and controls her father's estate and she has not given her blessing to this film but Martin Scorsese is bringing on a all-star cast of Leonardo DiCaprio as Frank Sinatra and Jennifer Lawrence as his second wife Ava Gardner a little tricky since the daughter who controls the estate is the daughter of his first wife who he cheated on her with Ava Gardner but they would link up together for a biopic on Frank Sinatra's life this is coming off of Leonardo DiCaprio and Martin Scorsese just working together on Killers of the Flower Moon I would assume that maybe there's a little Killers of the Flower Moon was great, but from an award show and buzziness standpoint, it, yeah. it it took a tumble late in the award show season push. So trying to come back, I mean, Martin Scorsese at this point is 81 years old and he's still still kicking and still wanting to make big projects. But their love story is one of my, I just love Ava Gardner, well, first of all. Frank Sinatra is a great Frank character. Yeah. A great yeah. character. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when you do have to like get into the mafia element the of pack, everything. Though, and got, and, yeah. yeah. And Ava Gardner, one of my favorite anecdotes from a celebrity biography was, so Frank Sinatra was 119 pounds and Ava Gardner was like a Hollywood hottie. What do you and mean so 119 he was, pounds? He was skinny. He was a skinny dude. That's like a child. Yeah, he was really, really small. And she notoriously, uh, when someone asked why she stayed with him, she said of the 119, 19 pounds was just his. <laughs> Yeah. All right, Frank. All right, yeah. bro. So uh, that's right, where Frank, right, that's bro. where Put that stands. Frank. But like their love story started yeah. on a night. It's like an infamous story where they ran away at a party together and shot guns into the air and got arrested. And that's how they felt. I tell you this, <laughs> I'd sign up for Leonardo DiCaprio and uh, Jennifer Lawrence. I love both yes. of them. And I think it's really good casting. Yeah, they're great. And they could do so well. And I don't know. Anytime Martin Scorsese and Leonardo DiCaprio, I mean, we have Wolf of Wall Street, we have The Departed. Are you sure he wasn't 119 pounds just when he died? Because it's saying he was 5'7", 143. I don't know. I just know in her, in her is biography, also small, that's what. A small tell, human. Look up, a, well, not on a work computer, but yeah. <laughs> look yeah, up Ava Gardner, Ava Gardner yeah, yeah, 119 right. pound quote. How about that? I don't need a wiener photo to pop up. When the Frank Sinatra would be a great uh, yeah. character. Yeah, that's what. When the history. press asked her about her husband, Frank Sinatra, Ava Gardner infamously said he only weighs 119 pounds, but 19 pounds is straight. Wow. Let's see, there you go. That does not sound like. <laughs> shout out to, shout out <laughs> the to Frank. first thing that pops up is how big was it really? <laughs> that a fan. That, yeah, that doesn't sound like it. never mind. Bro. It's the kind of thing you'd want your girl to say though. You know, that's yeah. a real one. Even if keeping your legacy alive, even if it's not true, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and it's, it's like alive. Alive. It's forever. That's like the ultimate. In 2024, like, Jessica Benson's on this show. <laughs> so you're talking about you're thinking that you were yeah. the champion. I'm the <laughs> champion. <laughs> Just spreading the good word. Thanks, Sinatra. Okay, last but not least, I wanted to ask everyone a question because this week I fulfilled um, something that has meant a lot to me. I finished The Sopranos. Oh, okay. Six seasons. I came to the conclusion finally over the last few months. It was a great supplement to the Grizzly season. Yep. Coming home and tuning out whatever happened there by watching another episode of The Sopranos. What is your greatest TV show of all time? I'll ask all three of you. Like and that it doesn't we, have that to we be like finished or we great, like just yeah like, that you finished or like something that stands out to you like your favorite greatest tv show y'all might judge me for my answer i'm gonna let you well, go okay. first but. i go back and forth between the wire and the sopranos okay hey, it's, i love i love the wire as well um i would say the one that i got most immersed in was 24. Two. Oh. Okay. The key for Sutherland one. Boom. When it when it first came out, I've never that was that will always be special because that's the first true binge watch, and right. that was in the age of DVDs, and I was getting them from like Redbox, <laughs> and like I would like race to go get the next disc so that I could, could watch. Keep watching it. Yes, okay. and I just I mean I burned through seasons, and I could not go to bed at night because I yeah. had to know because every episode ends on a cliffhanger. <coughs> Every single one. I love that show. Yeah. I, that show. I, I guess I'm y'all know I'm not a big TV show watcher, but the one I've like is apartment television for me. It became apartment television every time it came on and I ran to it. And I told them about this power. Oh. It was six seasons, bro, and I and they're an hour each and I would tap in to watch yeah. every episode. I, I 
I love that show. Yeah. It's just so ridiculous because like, there's a lot of things that don't make sense. Yeah. But I think for like just episode, 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 just and like you said. And you in. That's what Yeah, it the, takes. the cliffhangers. Like, they like walk into a building with a gun. That's right. And it just cuts off. And it's like, what happened? What happened? I have to I know. had to know who got shot. I have shot. to know. I Weird, that's what thing. happens at the end of The Sopranos. <laughs> yeah, and, no. then, and then you start the next one. But yeah. I mean, like, yeah, I would say, yeah, because I, I am one that, like, many, there's a, I've got a list of a yeah. thousand of them that I, I've just stopped. Like, something happens and I just. Tune out. Yeah, I love that show. That, I love that show, Las Vegas, with James. Oh, my God. Cox I love Las Vegas. And Josh Jumel. Yes. Oh, that but, was when Josh Jumel was with Fergie. That was yeah, the whole time. They lost me. They're, they lost me in one of the late seasons. Like a chick jumped off a roof or something, <laughs> yeah, right. started floating, and I was like, "All right, this is now fantasy well, oh, land. Haywire. I'm done." But I, the first several seasons, yeah. oh, I loved that show. Loved it. So I'm that way with like uh, with like House of Cards. Yeah, like mm. House of Cards. Yeah, I never, I never got, watched the last one. Well, everything it yeah. got too ridiculous. I'm like, okay, well, yeah. this is just you just going a bit too far with. It, I so. I truly loved the Sopr the Sopranos lived up to all. It's your favorite one. It's not. I think I like Mad Men more. Mad Men's my favorite show of all time. I just like the connectivity of it, and yeah. I think John Hamm was brilliant in it, and the writing of it. Like the suitcase is one of my favorite episodes of TV. Were you a ever. Game of Thrones person? I was. And so I do you like it better than Games of Thrones? Yeah, because I just I hated how Game of Thrones ended. Oh, okay. so I would put Mad oh, Men oh. and Sopranos in my like top two. But I also loved a show called Six Feet Under. Uh, yeah. That was one of the first shows I binged in high school when I got a laptop. I was binging Six Feet Under and Gossip Girl at the same time. So like, what a what a combo! But I, it's just a reminder: like, good TV is good TV, yeah. but good TV to you, it can be anything. And I thanks to Bennett Doyle, I supplemented watching The Sopranos with The Sopranos podcast with Michael Imperioli and the guy who plays Bobby Bacala. Okay. They came out with it during the pandemic, and it was essentially a rewatch. And they went through all of them. And on the final episode. So going on Made in America, one of the most famous episodes of television ever, they're getting to the point where they're going to talk about the restaurant scene, and they just briefly mention restaurants that mean something to them in America. And this guy goes, you know what, I, I got to give a shout out to Memphis, Tennessee and Bardog Tavern. What? And I now need to know why Bobby Bacala was at Bardog Tavern in Memphis and felt the need to shout it out. And what did he eat? Yeah, what did he well, get they from have Bardog? A killer penny vodka. I love Bardog's penny vodka, and it's an Italian show, so I'm just gonna. Too. What is penny? Penny shots are fire. I got penny pasta with vodka sauce. Oh. And chicken. It's a I've great never pasta. eaten there. Oh, they have great food. Oh, they they do have, great have food. amazing yeah. food at yeah. Bardog. They're their island club. Oh. oh yes, they're oh, island the Their chicken club. tenders are my favorite chicken tenders in the city. Yeah, they're I don't good. think I've ever eaten food there. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they got good vibes. Good. They're really good. But I was just like, what a random. And so that happened. And then on the same day that we finished was the. Did you see the Knicks video to woo LeBron James? No. Uh, yeah. James Pablo Gendel Torres Pini Pini or and Edie Falco, where they're pretending like they survived and moved to New York, and everything's better in New York, and, and they're trying to the sell. Witness protection program. It's the. Yeah. <laughs> it's so cringe. Speaking of cringy, but yeah, I wouldn't go on there either. Good time. I wouldn't go on there either. It's anyway, shout out crap. the Sopranos. I'm looking for my next series. Well, yeah, you got the whole we've, summer, we've tried right? to we've hey, tried to start the wire three times. Y'all should watch maybe this time. Watch Power, be the one. bro. Tap watch in with Power, wire. James St. Patrick. Okay. Watch the wire. Tap what in the, with what was Power on? Uh, stars. stars. It was on. Star See, that's the problem. What's, it's you hard got a Stars to password? On, no. Okay. I can get us your password, okay. bro. I can finesse. <laughs> right. Get you a password. You Jessica Benson, <laughs> uh, that's going to do it for today's show. Thanks to Gary Paris. Thanks to John Rose from Across the Glass. Thanks to Devin Walker. Thanks to Jalen back in the studio. Uh, we've got two games that are going on tonight. We'll obviously recap those tomorrow on the show. Gang will all be here, and we will talk to you then. Until then, we go. gone.